Isabel Huppert. Isabel Huppert. That's that can't be right. Isabel Huppert. Isabel Huppert. Isabel Huppert. Greta was directed by the Oscar-winning filmmaker behind The Crying Game, Neil Jordan, and stars Chloe Grace Moretz and Isabelle Huppert. So a very naive young woman, played by Moretz, is on the subway one day and notices a purse. And in this purse is an ID. Trying to be a good person, she returns this purse to Greta at her personal house, and a friendship develops that eventually becomes very toxic. And Greta reveals herself to be a lot more than a sweet lady who's really good at playing the piano. This film was okay. Chloe Grace Moretz is really good in the film. She has a lot to do with her character because she has to go through a lot of different emotions, sometimes very rapidly in scenes. And there's some physical stuff too that is very demanding of an actress. And I think she really pulled it off and, and gave a good sympathetic performance. She was believable as this naive person who wasn't used to Manhattan and, and you know living in the city, which is really important to this story working because she makes choices where anyone who's ever lived in a big city before is going to look at her and be like, what the hell are you doing? This is just so many red flags right now. And that can be a little annoying, which is a little more so on the script, which we'll talk about in a minute. But without a doubt, the star of this film is the title character, Greta, played by Isabel Huppiel. I guess is how you say her name, and I'm trying to do my best with that. But I've seen her in quite a bit of films, mostly French movies. Uh, the Piano Teacher, I just talked about that on the Sardana cast. But with this film, you can really tell that this movie would not even be close to as good as it is without these two lead actresses. Micah Monroe is also in the film, and she's fine. She doesn't have a very demanding role at all. She kind of has to play the streetwise friend that is a roommate of Chloe Grace Moretz. And she's constantly like, hey, what are you doing? This is obviously a bad decision. She's sort of like the audience character, you know, like she speaks what we're saying. And her role is fine. She's okay in the movie. It's just that the script itself is filled with so many cliches and so many familiar scenes. And you can see where it's going a mile away. It's the kind of film that was made a lot in the 90s. There were tons of movies like this where there was just this crazy person who followed people everywhere or he started out okay, or she started out fine, and then eventually they just went nuts. Pacific Heights with Michael Keaton is a good example. There's a film called uh, Deceived with Goldie Hawn and John Hurd. There's a lot of movies that were like this in the 90s where it was just completely reliant on certain things happening or certain things not happening. Greta displays so many warning signs early on where just about anybody would be like, I need to get the fuck out right now because this is some bad shit that's going to happen. I know it. And so we're constantly waiting for our protagonist to see these obvious signs and she doesn't and it becomes frustrating. And yes, her character is very naive. It's set up early on that she's new to Manhattan and she's new to this type of lifestyle and she's very trusting when that doesn't always work out. And so you can kind of give it a pass after a while, but then, you know, without getting into any spoilers, there comes points in the movie where some physicality would be a great thing and she just doesn't do it. And I just have, I just have a really hard time believing that a young woman who is athletic and able to take care of herself, like Chloe Grace Moretz's character, would not be able to take on an older lady. It just seems very... It just doesn't make sense, goddammit. Still, there are some high points to the film. There's a great buildup. There's some tension that's brewing for a while where you start to wonder when it's about to explode. And when it does, it becomes one of those movies where if you have a hard time with any awkward, public, embarrassing scenes or cringe scenes like that, it's going to be hard for you to watch. There's a lot of those moments. But building up to that, it was pretty effective. And a lot of that is due to some really good cinematography. The movie is super sleek looking, really well shot, and two actresses who are giving great performances. Although the movie is definitely aiming for a hamminess. There's a camp factor here. And if it's trying for that, they succeeded. Still, this is a really well-directed film with some good acting, uh, some good suspense, but it builds to a finale that just asks us to take a lot of things for granted and accept a lot of things at face value, where I think there are so many different ways that this character could get out of the situation she ends up in, 
and it's just the movie really doesn't want her to because if she gets out of it, then the movie will end. I'm gonna give Greta a C plus. In my opinion, without these two actresses in this movie, this would be almost a straight to VOD script. It's strange to me that they got involved with it. It could be because of Neil Jordan's Oscar winning background, perhaps. It's just that it feels like there wasn't enough on the page to really warrant this incredible talent in the film. Nevertheless, check it out if you're in the mood for an okay, decent stalker movie. You might enjoy it. Thank you guys so much, as always, for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.